Hey guys, this is Arya Train Man 2, and uh, I got a couple of personal emails from some friends. A uh, guy here in Oregon, uh, he's also a <clears throat> model railroader, and a uh, friend in Nevada. Uh, they wanted to know how I made my switch stands. I have two switch stands already made here. I don't know if you can see them. Well, if I move them back a little bit. Uh, they, they're pretty basic. Uh, there's nothing really to them. Uh, it's just a few pieces of plastic and styrene and brass uh, all put together to make a little switch stand. Uh, if you buy these through some companies, they cost as much as eight dollars each. Uh, I have the money to buy those. Obviously, that's not as much as some of my Genesis motors, but uh, I just don't see the point if I can build it myself. Uh, what I do to start with is uh, this is from the Walther's Chain Link Fence Kit, and these are uh, like little I beams that you use as posts to secure them to the ground. Uh, these are perfect switch stand. Uh, stand mounts right here uh, and then I use brass wire and bend it to make the loop and then just uh, cut a piece of square styrene on the top there uh, these stands are different even though they may look the same uh, one of them has the pegs facing away the other one has the pegs facing too I did that on purpose so when uh, the stands are on the layout you won't see how the brass wire is glued to the stand which looks kind of cheap and the uh, target on the top you won't see the the little peg coming up uh, and then of course the finishing touches is I glue them down to the layout and paint them you know make them look realistic and weather them I guess a little bit <clears throat> so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and build one real quick uh, they don't take that long to build at all. I cut uh, a couple of little eye beams off the sprue here with an X-Acto knife, number 11 blade. It's my favorite blade. It seems to work the best. And I take the little eye beams and I'm going to shave off a little bit right up here at the top of each each one kind of shave a little bit do the same on this side on this one just on one side and then I can use those flat edges to glue them together but first I mock them up together as you can see they're separated they like to separate right off the bat and not stay together because of the flat edge I take my finger and bend them apart a little bit so that it makes like a V or an A shape I can then glue them together a little bit of cheap super glue you don't have to buy the expensive stuff like they say in the model railroader any glue will work if you pinch together really hard the glue actually dries faster and as you can see this isn't too hard you know this isn't something like uh, you know building something so much into detail that you can't uh, waste too much time on it uh, the time I spend on this is is well worth the effort, especially if you don't have to buy the switch stands because they can be spendy. I then take a what I use is board and batten, uh, basically because it's left over from the crap I've been working on already. <laughs> so uh, you know I don't have to buy another piece. It's evergreen styrene, 
board and batten. You can see the little loops on it. Uh, of course, I put the bumpy part to the bottom. The smooth tart part is to the top. See, I lay it down right on the rungs. Get it to the shape where I want it, where the switch stand uh, is going to be sitting on top of it. I have to shave it off. A pair of scissors. Uh, it works easy. And as you can see, you can do this rather fast. It doesn't have to be anything special. Then to uh, shorten it, because it's a little tall right now, I take my X-Acto knife, cut a little bit of the top off, then I turn it around, level it off by cutting the bottom off a little, separate it a little bit more, a couple dabs of glue on the bottom, stick it on the square styrene, Voila! Got a switch stand that's already standing up. Now, I have some uh, little piece of uh, plastic tubing from uh, a fence. I believe it was from Kibri or maybe Fowler. This round tubing I cut off the fence uh, with some kind of uh, fence railing. And a fence kit, and I don't know if I have any left up here. Uh, yep, do have a piece. Is this the styrene fence kit? You know, it's plastic, flexible. But I use these for my uh, stand targets. I don't use metal or brass because it takes a long time to glue. The plastic uh, is actually a lot faster. And I cut off a little piece. Doesn't really matter how long it is. This piece is about that long. Take it in a pair of tweezers or hemostats that I like to use. Put a little bit of dab of glue on the bottom. Don't use too much glue. The less you use, the faster it dries. So I just use a little bit of glue. Shit, I just lost it, so I gotta cut another one. Pardon the French here. Uh, another thing you can do is cut a perfect square piece out. Have a little bit of glue on the table, so I'll just use that. And there you go, there's your target. Easy. A little bit of glue I have laying on the table. And stick it on the top of the target. Voila! There you go. Stays on that easy. And then I take a brass wire from this spool I bought from the hobby store. Take off a little bit of that. Cut it with a pair of dykes and just bend it to the shape of a handle. I actually saw this handle on a real switch in uh, my local area. You can see it's got kind of a funky shape bend to the bottom of it. About as close to the prototype as you can get without spending a whole lot of money. Straighten out the wire. Bend it. And it again, and again at the bottom and the middle. So it looks like that. Pretty simple. And I cut the long edges off with my dikes again until it's about that long. As you can see my finger in the picture. And then glue it to the back of the target.
This is the hard part. Brass gluing to plastic doesn't work most of the time. Takes a little bit to get it to work. You pinch it kind of hard with your fingers, it works, but then you have glue on your fingers, so you got to be careful when you take it off. And I managed to glue my finger on, but I got it off in one piece. The finishing touch is two pieces of styrene stick. Uh, the size is point zero eight zero by point eight zero eight zero. It's the number one sixty four by Evergreen. Cut two pieces about an inch long. Uh, if you want to get technical and use a ruler to to measure, you can. I just make sure the both ends are lined up, and then put a mark on the piece I need to cut, then slide it away and cut it. Easy as that. Last thing you do is put these together, pick up the stand, and glue it to the top of the, the posts. And there you go. A switch stand in uh, about 10 minutes. After you paint it, the ending result is. Oh, that don't look good. Oh, come on here. A realistic looking switch stand that I don't have to pay $8 for. Got them all over the layout. Some spots you can't put a switch in because there's not enough room. So I put a flat plate on the ground, like a prototype switch would be underground. You have to lift up a plate to get to it. And, uh, and there you go. Only other new thing I have to report is uh, another chain link fence in front of uh, Jimbo's towing. Not done yet all the way. A little bit more to do. But uh, let me know what you think about the switch stands. Good idea or not. Uh, they don't actually function, but uh, you can see the switches can still move back and forth, and they're not inhibited any way of being in the way of the stand. Uh, one of my new stands is going to go right here. Another one back there. And done. See you guys.